while, you've drawn so many pages, and you're going to draw conversations, and you're going to draw probably a fight scene or at least an action, and then probably establishing shots and close-ups. And after a while, how many times are you going to go to the same solutions? So as an artist that's growing and evolving, uh, I feel, and I think all of us do this, let's try to tackle the page a little bit differently. You're still dealing with the same space, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you tackle it differently? And uh, that's where you try to experiment with the layout, and that's where it's even more necessary to figure out what the lettering is. There's some pages in this alcoholic book I'm doing that I, I know a letter would look at and go, what the hell, or an editor might say, what have you done here? And I can now say, this is what I've done, and see how easy it is, because the lettering does dictate the way you look at a page, you know, even if you've laid it out in a bizarre experimental way. It's because the lettering is the only thing that makes it work. The lettering would be the only thing. Over. And yet, and you're trying to create a scenario on a page, a drunken kind of state of being or something like that, you may feel wobbly, and you're supposed to feel wobbly, but then the lettering will ground you. And then the words will round for a little bit and make, and make it not such a jarring experience, even though you want them to be a little jarring. And then, and then the last thing about that is the flip side is working at Activate and, and deciding, okay, I'm going to do these square panels, and each panel is exactly the same as you read this Billy Dogma comic. Then it's just an issue of pacing, you know? And that's a whole other way of thinking about the comics. Because you're not, you know, when, you, when you're presented with a page, you see the whole page, and then you go to the top, you know, corner, and then try to figure out how to read down to the end corner. Yeah. When it's just panels, it's only about pacing. It's like, what's in between? So does pacing start with your art more, or does it start with the writing more? Uh, you, you know, I, it used to always be writing for me, and with working uh, in the experimental nature I do with Billy Dahlman online and Activate, it's now the art dictates the pacing. It's, it's an actual it's pure comic. It has to be both. Story is overall right. what, what you need to convey. But I used to just do screenplay style, screen, you know, writing because I went to film school, and that's where words and like, you know, and then you, in the direction. But I was like, wait a second, this is comics, this is visual. You know, I, I would hope that you could look at what I'm drawing and still get the story without knowing the words. And I think that creates a stronger experience. I've stopped trying to tell myself that comics are art and story, and I started telling myself art is story and that it's it's not two things coming together it's the same thing that has to function as one thing as a know? unit and as as you look at some artists working today you can you can see that um, the you know the the energy that some artists bring to the page is it's like it's in the line work you know it's in the quality of the line like if you look at a, a Paul Pope drawing there's, if you just take in the page, there's an energy to it, but, but what is it like? Each line is, is actually like a phrase, you it's know? It's the mark making. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it actually translates as, you know, as part of the, uh, as one aspect of the story, you know, and the, and the two things have to be not perceived as two things. It, it, is, it is an amalgamation to it. Like someone in a book would write, to describe a room, but when you draw it, that drawing is the text. The exactly. Exactly. It's part, it's like to to separate the two. If, I think if you can look at a, a comic and go like, I like the writing, but the art didn't turn me on, but I still like the book, then you have two things that were never playing together, and it's like tearing out all the odd members, pages of a novel, and expecting it to work. It doesn't work that way. It's exactly how Dean described it. It's like that drawing of the room becomes part of the actual story. That's why it's narrative art. And, it's, and working with writers like Harvey Picard and Jonathan Ames, this is Jonathan Ames' first comic he's ever written, and it's amazing for an author to try to transpose his, his literature into comics form. And yet, there might be some stuff that's a little more descriptive that I've drawn, because he described it and then wrote it, too, as well. And I think, ultimately, he'll look at those pages at the end, the final draft, and go, we don't need that line, right. because you showed it, Dean. Right. Yeah. You know? And, in fact, I think his job at that point will be to convey stuff that's not being shown on the page, which is, I think, a better comic. You don't draw a man walking into a room and then say, a man walking into a room. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think it's fascinating, because, I mean, this whole process of writing and drawing my own stuff is something I've only really taken seriously since drawing activity. Um, and it's become such a transparent process. I mean, I, I would even go as far as to say the characters now dictate their own necessity in the story. And so they very much themselves. feel, yeah, they're writing themselves. And you, you feel there's an urgency, there's definitely they have to have at this point 
and I can't not do that. It wasn't in the script. I've got a script. It's all, it's all there. It's complete garbage now. I'm almost thrown away. Um, and it's a bad script, but the actual final artwork is much better because of the artwork some pulls the, the writing in the way. The characters pull the whole process. Well, you're working in a Marvel style now. You had your yeah, idea. Yeah, Marvel style with myself. Now you're, drawing it. <laughs> now you're drawing it. And then after you've drawn it and you figured it out, now you're on top of it. You're rewriting it. And rewriting it. And this is the last thing. But let me ask you this question. If you dare answer it. Now that you started writing and, and studied you know, this process and you've been doing it forever, I, think, I don't think he's ever not worked as a cartoonist. I've never had a proper job in my whole life. So, yeah, <laughs> But now that you've done that, you're working and you continue to work with writers. Does it, is it more challenging with a writer than you see a lot of mistakes now that you've made? It's more boring mm -hmm. working yeah. with other writers. Because you just go, that could be so much more elegant. You could have done something with, you kind of have to you kind of have to switch part of your brain off. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to like make yourself dumber. And do you think it's it. true that? That's that's like I've got to go <laughs> really, really back into my shell again because I can see I've been so kind of like yeah. having so much fun with this. Right. And then I kind of like suspend. No, I can't. I can't be too critical about this. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. do it. I mean, that's what people I respect to be a dealer's writers, but you well, can never be as good. You, yeah. These people can never be as, as, as integrated as you are with yourself. And then exactly. you think about the, a Grant Morrison, Alan Moore, let's say, and even a Brian K. Vaughan, and yeah. these guys know comics so well because most of them have drawing shops of some sort, but think about the visuals. You know, I think that those are better comic book writers because they are actually cartoonists in a way, too. The best writers the make you do what they want even you don't know you're doing it. Mm. And it's a kind of somehow they, they exert their their hand. You become their hands, mm. and that's a great relationship to have. And you feel it's very enjoyable to do. And when you see the final artwork, you just go, "Oh, I just drew a John Wagner page." God, I don't. It's I'm a complete John Wagner page, mm -hmm. um, and it definitely, you certainly feel a writer's voice coming through you. And it's not necessarily something you're consciously aware of. I mean, I've worked with some writers for on and off for ten years now, and you definitely feel it coming out. And the page mm -hmm. looks different. And much as I try and change it, and I have tried. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. the, the, the dictate of the, of the writing and the voice, the, the authorial voice of the writer is so strong that you end up being their hand. Which well, is they, great. They, That's they, they dictate some of the pacing and some of what you're focusing on when, and then therefore you get some of that, that mind state on the page. Yeah. But I wouldn't try and dictate. I mean, I can't. As I said, you know, you try and impose your, your, the way I work now from Lily on Dante, I can't. You can't. Because Dante's voice is so particularly Robbie's voice. And the way I draw it, so particularly the way Dante expresses himself physically, um, it's, 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 you become kind of integrated with somebody else after a while. It's, it's very, a very close relationship, even though we barely talk to each other. The same thing happened with the uh, Same thing happened with Pat Sitter, but it's supposed to be very short. So. And, I mean, and, actually, and the characters uh, start talking a lot. Well, <laughs> they won't stop talking. They won't stop. I really want the story to end. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, they're not so bad. <laughs>